The Marine State Management Strategy has nine initiatives, one of which is Initiative 1. That has everything to do with managing diffuse pollutants, namely sediment and nutrients in our case. In the early days, we did some modelling to identify where those major sources of sediment and nutrients were coming from, and that modelling indicated that the Alstonville Plateau was a major hotspot for that loss. So we took the idea of working on the Alstonville Plateau as part of the Richmond River pilot to DPI, OEH at the time, and some of our other major partners who all endorsed the idea of working in this particular area and to basically complement the other works that were happening in the Richmond River. For a long time, council and the community knew that it, the river was bad and uh, the oyster industry disappeared and prawning in the, in the river disappeared. And it wasn't until we had an examination by the state government and the, we found out the river was a D plus and it was the worst in coastal New South Wales that everyone started to think we've got to do something more. In this area we've got quite a large concentration of camphor and other weed species that dominate the landscape. Heavily eroded banks, generally through a lack of appropriate land management but also through heavy boat wash activity. We also had quite a number of unsealed roads that were really, really close to marine estate assets. We're actually delivering three actions under the Marine Estate Management Strategy and those actions are restoration of riparian areas on waterways, so that's all the vegetation from the banks backwards, stabilising the banks of the waterways themselves and also sealing dirt roads because we know they're a major sediment polluter of waterways. Dirt and things ending up in our uh, small streams which uh, feed into the, the main river um, were causing a lot of the problems so we knew there had to be a start and that's what this project's all about. The conditions here before they started works on the riverbank was more or less just every flood event something was bound to fall in, risk of losing your road, the vegetation that was already there. We essentially developed a new technique for what would typically be called rock revetment. In that we included snags, uh, pins and reef balls to supplement those uh, that structure and provide complex habitat. We also employed a new technique which is essentially a snag hotel mimicking uh, a log jam and so recently we've installed a hundred snag hotels to provide both what boat wave deflection qualities but also complex aquatic habitat one of the more complex jobs that we undertook was the development of a mangrove nursery. We chose um, a log fillet in this instance and a corrugated log fillet design that actually provides boat wash deflection but also the means to grow mangroves behind that structure. The benefits of the program going forward will be that the, the soil will not keep eroding from the bank, the vegetation will come back and the fish as well. Our road was right on the river and we had no room to move so to take out a couple of trees to receive what we have got on the river I think it's, it's a fair ask. The Marine Estate Management Strategy have contributed to supporting landholders with implementing protection works. So it's, it's a form of living sediment fence, these buffers are on our riverways to buffer the sediment and the nutrient that, that leaves these properties and eventually enters our waterways. Conditions here along our Duck Creek were very overgrown with woody weeds. At some places it was hard to, to get to the creek line. So in this location we used two types of restoration strategy. Firstly we used the assisted regeneration because it already had a good canopy cover of natives. So the assisted regeneration just takes away the weeds from the mid and the lower story so that the native seed bank can regenerate itself. The second strategy we used was rehabilitation which was used in areas where you can't take it back to its natural state because of farming practices or power lines. In that section we sort of used lamandra carracks and a few other sedges and grasses to sort of intercept the plantings. The community will get a lot out of this project. We want to actually start doing some guided bushwalks down here so the, the community can come and see exactly what the regen team have done down here and, uh, and to show what can be done through bush regen. We're up in the top of the catchment area for Howard's Creek and the water quality that was running off the property with degraded sand creek banks and with cattle running on the property was affecting the water quality downstream. The works that took place at the site were a combination of assisted regeneration and reconstruction. The main works that happened were obviously the canopy camphor control and also putting up the fences to stop cattle access to the creek. Hopefully the water quality for the future for certainly macroinvertebrates and the 
fauna that's improving in the area. Yeah. We're glad to, that the habitat's improving for them. Our daughter so, saw a platypus there the other day. So. Thrilled about that. We've built really strong relationships with our landholders. We continue working with them, we continue supporting them, provide training for them. They can come to us if they have any issues, but in the next five years we'll be working very closely with them. Big Scrub Regeneration are supporting landholders in upskilling their species ID, so educating landholders on weed control techniques and also the significance of the vegetation that they have on their property. So how are we going to measure the success of this project? We can measure it um, qualitatively through the biodiversity and ecosystem health that we get, the tourism and recreational value, the benefits to fisheries, as I said before, both commercial and recreational. We've undertaken 38 kilometres of riparian restoration, but as I said before, cattle farms and this tea tree farm that we're here on today, we've actually undertaken 2.3 kilometres of bank stabilisation. We've done all this work in partnership with Big Scrub Regeneration, with Ballina Shire Council, Soil Conservation Service, multiple landholders, as I said before, DPI Fisheries, all of those have contributed to the success of this project. We've invested $1.7 million to get that riparian restoration, invested $1.3 million to do the bank stabilisation. I think the benefits that we're actually, and the achievement we get from that will be, you know, really hard to count actually. That's a small investment when you think about what we're getting from the project.